Hi, this is Mario Skuneski, you're watching Ministry of Twang, and today's video is going to be all about thumb independence, how to build independent thumb. So I'll show you all the exercises and techniques, how to get there. Uh, first thing we have to realize is that the thumb is uh, like a driving force behind uh, the yes, this sort of finger-picking style um, guitar. Uh, when we have a rock time accompaniment, this sort of uh, rock time, alternating bass and chord, um, comping style, it's uh, all thumb work. Uh, fingers are not involved most of the time in playing the comping. So that's why the uh, thumb independence is such a crucial element. Um, first of all, maybe let's uh, think about what actually um, makes the thumb in, uh, independent uh, from the fingers. It's more of a ability of putting any rhythm and any melody over comping um, bass and chord note. So uh, I usually don't think of it as an independence, more of like a ability to break down quickly things that are going on, all the elements that we uh, have involved in a tune. So there are three things, bass note, chord, and a melody. And uh, two of those elements, bass and chord, are being played by thumb. Uh, but uh, to start and to get uh, our head around the general uh, technique and approach to those rhythms, uh, we'll start with something very, very, very simple. And uh, at every stage, once we uh, add up any element or we alter our rhythms, uh, we'll always go back to the most simple form uh, of uh, rock time comping, which is uh, gonna be uh, just a single note in the bass, and that's what we are about to start with. Uh, we'll use E major chord, so we just don't want to get our picking, uh, our fretting hand tired, because it's gonna take a lot of time uh, to go through those exercises. We'll start with something uh, very, very simple. Uh, we'll use thumb pick on E string, open E string. Um, I'll use palm muting. This is the uh, side of my palm that I use over the strings, but just over the bass strings, which is quite essential because I want to have comping notes short and melody notes ringing. So, that's about what I'm aiming for. Ringing first string and uh, short, snappy bass notes. Um, but first things first, this is the first exercise uh, where we'll have just a bass note. And uh, Let's make sure that we know our rhythms, our division of the rhythms. Uh, we think of those notes played by thumb as quarter notes. So we count them in a bar of four fourths. It's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's what we need for now. Uh, on every one of each measure, uh, we'll pluck first string with our index finger. So. That's, that's the whole exercise. Uh, we have our bass note going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And on one, I'll play first string together with my bass note. So it's gonna sound like that. One, two, three, four. Um, remember to start as slow as it feels comfortable for you. Even if it's going to be like ridiculously slow, it will get you to the final result way quicker than trying to 
played at a faster tempo and not doing it uh, in a precise way uh, because we want to uh, get certain aspects away like dealing with the rhythm when uh, it's going to be rugged or not too smooth it will always come in a way will uh, always have something that is going to distract us from basically uh, our our goal is just to keep the note ringing and to have it in the right moment. So we don't want to speed up, we don't want to slow down. You can use a metronome if you wish, uh, but it's good to be aware that the slower we play that, uh, the better uh, at first it's going to be for to, to, to keep all the elements uh, together, especially once we incorporate some more complicated stuff. So um, this first exercise, which was very 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 basic we already had two lines we have we had bass note and a melody note uh, now we need to learn how to put this melody note single melody note on every beat so the first exercise was uh, with a melody note on beat one now it's gonna be uh, on beat two. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and so on on beat three one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, take your time, practice, repeat. Uh, I just don't want to spend too much time in this video showing those first exercises, but um, spend some good 10 minutes on each of those to make it completely automatic until you basically get bored to death with it. That's, that's the point when you feel comfortable and you can do something else, uh, I don't know, read a book, watch TV and go through those exercises. It, it's it just, just to um, make it more of a muscle memory than, uh, than a controlled uh, playing. So the less we think about it, the better. That's where the so-called thumb independence kicks in. Um, okay, for those exercises uh oh did we do did we do the beat four okay one two three four one two three four okay so we have the melody note on each beat of uh, of a bar uh now what we're gonna do is we'll uh make a little bit more interesting thing with the thumb we'll um alternate between bass note and a chord note. So we'll need our E major chord and we'll do the same thing with a melody. It's gonna be on the first beat, then on the second beat, then on the third, then on the fourth. But the thumb work is gonna be quite different. On every two and four, instead of playing the bass note, we'll play two middle strings. So it's gonna sound like that. Now it's just a thumb work. We have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, those two middle strings are played with a single strum of a thumb. So it's downstroke, downstroke through two middle strings. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, play that comping line for a while before you put any melody notes over it. Because we want to teach our muscles to aim for the right spots um, on a guitar to aim for two middle strings. It's quite important because this is the point where we'll be coming back with our our uh, alternating bass note. So um, it always takes some time to readjust. Uh, once you pick up the guitar, it's good to warm up and uh, just to get back to, to shape. To get those bass and two middle strings going. And it's also important to uh, keep the position of the palm uh, roughly at the same spot every time uh, we, we, we use this technique. Uh, mostly because we want to dampen the bass strings, 
so we don't do anything really with our wrist that's that's what makes so so much different from playing flat pick where we one part of the movement um, of a wrist is basically coming from the arm so it's a it's a it's a joint thing and uh, with this kind of finger picking technique that I use the uh, palm and the wrist is steady and it's almost all in the fingers um, okay so now let's try to put our melody notes on top of the alternating bass and note comping our beat one one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four again spend some good 10 minutes just on this one it's gonna be the longest 10 minutes you ever spend with a guitar and uh, now let's move on to following beats two three and four one two three four one two three On beat three. One, two, three. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. On beat four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, okay, next thing we'll do um, is we'll try to play the same series of exercises but using second string it's a little bit different because now we'll be very close to our two middle strings and we want to keep the second string ringing but the two middle strings shorter than the ringing one so it might be a little bit tricky because now we need to partially mute some of the strings it takes some adjusting uh, sometimes well we, we don't have to aim to be that precise because usually when we play those finger picking tunes uh, they will have this kind of rough around the edges rootsy um, vibe onto 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 them uh, so maybe it's not that crucial but it's good to think about it that we at least want the melody note to ring somehow to be um to be audible not to dump and not to buzz maybe just just to keep uh comping and melody on top of each other and try trying not to interfere uh with the chord nor melody in terms of you know choosing our strings with a thumb so again we're going back to the to square one we'll have second string bass note just a single bass note and every beat in a bar so again one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four beat two one two Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, same thing. Second string with chord on two and four. So we'll have alternating bass and chord. One, two, three. On beat two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On beat three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. On beat four, one, two, ah, beat four, I said. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now we have certain idea that 
sometimes we'll have melody notes just on the bass note and sometimes we'll have them on the chord so right away we can tell that in our picking hand there's gonna be moment when there is something going on with either a note that is on the lowest sounding strings sometimes it's gonna be with the strings in the middle so this is one of those elements that actually will help us break certain things down and uh, in uh, most of the tunes will deal with uh, quite simple rhythms and some syncopations by syncopations i mean that there's going to be also notes that will be in between one two three and four um, as we have a bar of four fourth we have four quarter notes one two three four and at the same time we have eight eight notes evenly in between so it's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and this is what makes uh, most of the melodies more interesting because we can put more even notes in a bar again we'll go back to the first exercise and uh, thing will get a little bit tricky because right now we'll have eight possibilities to put our melody note against the bass and a chord but again we'll start just with the bass note okay um, starting with uh, beat one nothing interesting almost as it was before so we'll have one two three four one two three four we can think of it as one and two and three and four and one and two and three and three and four and I started at slower tempo because I want those eight notes to be precise because some of them will be just like quarter notes at the same spots with our bass note or a chord note and some of them are gonna be in between so now we need to be sure where exactly they are okay first exercise just like the first exercise first beat with the bass note one two two and three and four and okay nothing new now we'll move our melody note on to second eighth note of the bar so it's gonna be at the uh, exact point when we think of our one end so it's one end this is gonna be tricky because we'll play this note right after our bass note in between our bass notes. So it's going to be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And but we don't have to count. We don't have to, you know, overwork our head with all those rhythms and with analyzing the theory. Um, I've been doing it for over 25 years, so just to be able to explain it to someone who's been, who knows some theory or maybe played some other genres of music. But in reality, we want to hear this rhythm. Oh, I got the ears. Yeah, and there's one on the other side also. Uh, so we want to hear with those those rhythms how they sound we want to get familiar with those rhythms and at the same time we just need to memorize the way to execute them so again it's the thumb independence is not really a single thing it's a set it's a whole toolbox of different techniques that we use that will allow us to execute whatever we hear in our head so this rhythm basically if we want to to break it down to the most simple things is just bass melody bass 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 melody bass so it's like mm -mm. we hit we hit thumb index thumb index that's what's going on thumb index thumb 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 index thumb 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 that's what that's what it is mm -mm. okay uh, 
now we had first eighth note and second eighth note. Third eighth note is just going to be on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So exactly like pre one of the previous exercises. Uh, now we'll do um, end of two. So it's going to be one, two, and three, four. 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 Again, what we do in here, we're shifting it in the bar, but the technique is exactly the same. So it's bass, bass note, bass, bass. So there is just one melody note happening after the bass note in a different moment of the bar, basically, on two, but the technique is the same. We just need to get used to it and make sure that we precisely feel when the when the bar starts so we can put it anywhere we wish. Uh, let's skip uh, beat three because that's exactly the same as a quarter note, um, third quarter note of the bar. We can already get it covered. Uh, end of three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Four, beat four, same thing. End of four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. Okay? Same thing with the second string. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. And of course, on every ab beat we call uh, ab beats those ends. Of every beat, so we got downbeat, downbeats one, two, three, four, and upper beats one and two and three and four and okay. Uh, now we'll try to have a look at another exercise where we'll combine up beats and downbeats. So we'll have two notes in a bar, and uh, these are going to be two consecutive eight notes, and we'll shift them in a bar uh, starting with uh, beat one, one and, one and two, two, two and, three, and of three, and so on. So we'll just move this par pair starting along every eight note in a bar. Um, of course, with the previous exercise, we need to apply our thumb chord movement, but we'll get there. First, I want to talk about those syncopations, upbeats, and again, we'll work uh, with uh, with developing our thumb. So uh, it'll be, uh, you know, journey back and forth, going back to the basics, adding something up with very basic melody, very simple rhythms, but there's going to be more going on with the thumb. Then we'll um, figure out some more complicated rhythms. Again, back working over um, over the thumb, just to make it more interesting. And again, applying all those rhythms. And uh, once you go through all those exercises, there's probably not gonna be anything with your picking hand that you won't be able to do. Because in like 90% of finger picking tunes of that sort of uh, Chet Atkins, Merle Travis style, there is actually not much more than that. It's just a melody that is usually eight notes. Well, of course, some fancy chord uh, that allows us to play the comping and the melody and usually alternating, uh, alternating bass and chord with a thumb. So. It's just about getting those elements together to have all the necessary uh, techniques to, 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 to play basically any tune um, or write your own. And okay, so uh, we're back with the syncopations and uh, downbeats and upbeats. We'll have two notes per bar. And again, very simple thumping bass note at the moment at least. Uh, okay, first to eight notes of a bar. We'll have one, two, three, four, one and two, three, four. Same 
So for every for, 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 for every one, for every quarter note, we have two melody notes. So it's just another movement that we need to have uh, that we need to memorize that we have together melody note and a bass and then it's just the melody note and after that we have the quarter notes going on with a thumb one and two three four one and two Okay, uh, now we're shifting our eight notes, second and third in a bar, which is one and two. So it's one, four, one and two, and three and four, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One All right, I guess it's clear. We start with a bass note. After the bass note, we have just a melody note, and again, bass and melody together. So it's just a combination of bass note on, on its own, melody note, and together, at least for now. Um, two. And end of two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. Uh, end of three, uh, sorry, end of two and three. One, two, and three, four. 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 Okay. Uh, end of three and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Four, and end of four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and... I missed those two. Because I want to move over, move on, um, to um, some more of interesting um, bass pattern. Now, we'll try to play every sing single eight note with alternating bass and chord. So we'll start with beat one, one, four, one, two, three, four, and of one. One and two, three and four, and one and two. Okay, beats two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, end of two. One, two, and three, four. 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 Okay, beat three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, end of three. One, two, three, and four. One, two, 
three and four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. Beat four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. End of four. One, two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. Two, three, four, and. Um, now, same exercise as previous one, but with alternating bass and chord. So we have two eight notes, and we're shifting them one eight note at a time. One, <clears throat> one and two. One and and two. And two, three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Uh, two and end of two. End of two and three. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and one. Uh, one, and four, and end of four. One, two, three, 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 four. So uh, that's the whole concept uh, around those two consecutive notes. And um, we'll try to do um, something um, that will allow us to, 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 to put some more realistic rhythms, the ones that we actually find in tunes. Uh, so we'll start with something quite simple. We'll have three notes in a bar and, and these are going to be just first three eight notes. And again, we'll going back and starting with just a thumb. So we'll have one and of one and two. Now, right away, we'll adding up alternating bass note and chord. Okay, so these are our three notes, and now we'll shift them one eighth note later. So we'll start with on we'll start on one and two and um, uh, end of two, but again just with the with with the bass note. So it's gonna sound like mm, ah 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 three four one ah 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 three four. I play it slower just to see what's uh, happening, which note is on its own, which one is with a bass note, which one is uh, um, in between. So it's three, four, one, and two, and three. Now we'll do the same thing with alternating bass and chord.
uh, again we have grouping of three we added our um, bass and chord we have another uh, like like another idea what kind of movement we need to learn and memorize to make this happen at first it's gonna be um, just about making it work and after a while it becomes completely natural and uh, from thinking with uh, muscle memory I'll try to trigger this kind of movement to make it sound like that it will um, revert to the point where we just hear things that we want to play and uh, it's just gonna happen okay this is the rhythm that I want to put over the comping so uh, we'll um, try to make uh, uh, make another uh, exercise uh, that will incorporate certain rhythms and this time we'll use four notes in a bar and we'll start with only down beats and then only up beats so we'll have one two three four one two three four and then every up beat okay it's quite simple because Every note in the second bar of the exercise is just alternating with whatever the thumb is doing. Uh, let's try to put those two bars together. So one bar of downbeats, one bar of upbeats. Now we'll have a look at uh, the uh, more advanced thing that we can do with the thumb. Uh, we'll use alternating bass note. So right now, uh, the thumb that we use to play single thumbing bass note or note and chord will have to step up its game and instead of going lowest sounding string to middle, lowest sounding so it's six to middle, six to middle. Uh, we'll mm, make the bass note shift from root of the chord to fifth. So right now we'll uh, have a mm, picking pattern going like that. Six string, two middle strings. Fifth string, two middle strings. Six, two middle, fifth to middle and it's gonna sound like that again start in the slowest tempo that will allow you to make it uh, in rhythm evenly and comfortably so even if it's gonna be very slow So right now we need to make sure that, that the thumb is precise enough to strike 6th and 5th string and to middle strings at the right spots. And we'll start over with all the simple exercises. We're trying to put the melody note in every spot of the bar over this comping pattern. On one. On 
three. On four. And of course, on our ab beats. End of one. And now slowly. And of two. of three. End of four. Okay, I guess this is gonna be the end uh, of the first part. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And uh, I hope that you'll spend some time on uh, those exercises and that they will actually lead you to uh, some nice thumb independence. Um, of course, as you've noticed, this is not based on any actual tune. It's just a general view on how to make the scomping thumb and the rhythms going on. So this is like the uh, vast majority um, of the techniques that we will need, of course, uh, when, it, when it comes to the rhythms, um, because harmony and chords that we use in finger picking tunes are completely whole separate universe. And we'll also work on that at some point. Uh, but this is like a starter for thumb independence uh, and once you master those exercises you spend some time on them uh, just we'll just move and uh, move on I'll uh, do the second part with more exercises this is basically how I worked um, on those um, on, on those techniques and whenever there was uh, some challenging moment in a tune that I worked on um, I just broke it down exactly like that to see at which spot in a bar there's a melody a note where there is a chord note uh, what does the bass uh, do and uh, it was always a um, way to to um, get around it and, uh, and to learn um, anything that I always wanted to learn. Um, of course, uh, the great advantage of knowing those techniques is also ability to recognize them by ear, so you won't have to spend too much time with tabs or, um, or any other notation just to learn things. Once you know the harmony and you know the rhythms, it's quite easy to recognize what's there in a tune, and this is the most efficient way to learn those tunes. Uh, because you know how they're made, where they're coming from, where the, that there is a chord progression, and there's this kind of rhythmic pattern, and the melody notes are part of the chords, usually on first strings, and um, so so the core of every tune might be explained that way. Uh, also, it's way quicker just to hear the uh, comping over certain chords then trying to read the tabs with plenty of things going okay there are two or three notes spread over the strings there's a bass note there is no uh, way to tell what fingers exactly we should play it with uh, so assuming that uh, that the thumb is doing vast majority of comping work it's way easier to get your head around exactly how those tunes are played okay so uh bye for now and have a great time